So, the time has come to do it once again. Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy Monkamandrew and I'm here to do my breakdown review for My Hero Academia Season 7, Episode 17. And there's a fair amount that I want to go over in this episode and this breakdown, so let's just dive right into it and really talk about the episode. And to start off, the episode title comes from Manga Chapter 379 with the same name titled Hopes. And the episode itself covers chapters 379 all the way up to chapter 381, as well as covering the first nine pages of 382. And the episode starts at Central Hospital with a small added anime original scene as we cut to Lady Nagin trying to leave to help Deku, but is helped by Rocklock. We then get a cool perspective of Lady Nagat using her quirk as she makes her declaration of how she was saved as she shoots Tomura Shigaraki. And a point of note is that Lady Nagat isn't at Central Hospital at this moment. This is important because it means that Lady Nagat went to a new location closer to where Yue is because it is confirmed from a previous episode and even in the manga that she has a range of three kilometers or 1.86 miles as seen in chapter 312 and episode 20 of season six. And with that part, something else that I want to bring up is the animation of Deku and Tomura flying off UA. And I love this added animation that the anime does showing Deku pushing Tomura using his black whip off of UA and how they end up in the same position that we will see him later on in the episode. Also, Something else that I almost missed while editing this video is that we actually get a change in the opening in one of the scenes. And the scene that is changed in this episode of the opening is the scene with Kurogiri inside of Central Hospital being replaced with a scene of Gentle Criminal in his lover mode. Which is very interesting since both Kurogiri as well as Gentle Criminal in this episode plays the role of both somewhat villainous but also heroic figures. So yeah, that is something that I almost missed with the opening, so there you go. So there was a fair amount to talk about with the first part of the episode, but after the opening, we cut over to Tomura revealing All For One's plan and how he sabotaged it by hiding himself from All For One. The anime does add a short sequence which shows how All For One manipulated Tomura with Nana and All Might's connection to him, as well as some cool animations of the little Tenko inside of Tomura becoming the more modern version of Tomura clawing out of the hands that are being composed of All For One's fingers. And as the monologue concludes with Tomura literally breaking free of All For One right out of his mouth in a very cool fashion as Tomura is truly back with Deku declaring that he will save Tomura in a still frame imagery that looks amazing. And I would like to make a comparison between this scene between Deku and Tomura and comparing it to the manga. And how, while it's a little bit unfortunate that the scene was not done better in the anime in comparison to the manga, because in the manga, UA is seen in the background and the perspective is actually flipped from what we get. And while this isn't poorly done in the anime, the manga seems to have done it better when it comes to just the atmosphere of what this scene portrays. However, seeing the lightning flash in the background was a great touch. But going from the scene between Deku and Tomura, we get the very impactful scene of Gentle Criminal being a true hero as he is unaware that he's being filmed by the students inside of UA. He tries to get them to safety. He then realizes the strong resolve that the students of UA had, which gives him a new perspective of why he shouldn't have invaded UA. And after that resolve is seen, we get to see a closer look at the students who are being hacked by La Brava as they are filming the fight for the world. And a nice point of interest that you want to look at this scene is that when it comes to how La Brava hacks their phones, and a nice piece of detail that is added to this moment is that we actually get to see La Brava confirm that she hacked the phones because we see Optic Kitty on one of the phone screens indicating that La Brava was the one that hacked it. And it's from this part of the episode where we transition over to what's happening with Kurogiri as well as the other heroes at UA. Because afterwards, we focus on what's going on with Kurogiri as he wonders who he needs to protect as we see a cool added scene of action of Kaminari destroying some of the Toga Twice clones while also seeing Kurogiri save Yamada and Aizawa as we get another cool still frame of Deku charging at Tomura. And while this episode does have a lot of still frames, all of them are used to emphasize the impact of how important these certain scenes are, and they are used just 
in the most impactful moments. And speaking of impactful moments, we transition over to Wugunga Mountain Villa where we see that All For One is flying overhead of some added action sequences of the heroes going up against the Twice Toga clones. And as we also get All For One monologuing about how he needs to get to Tomura's location as Hawks attacks and aims to kill with Tokoyami charging behind. And there is a short action sequence of Hawks throwing his katana and using it to catch it and there is something that I want to mention that is a change between the anime and the manga. In the anime, we get the short sequence of Hawks throwing his katana and catching it with his feathers as he uses it to attack in a very cool and creative fashion. However, this is not the same action as it is in the manga, where in the manga, Hawks swipes with a fake attack as the feathers are coming in with a katana slash. And while this is a slight small change, it doesn't necessarily change what the scene was trying to portray. And while it would have been cool to see this scene animated exactly as it's seen in the manga, the fact that they were able to create an anime original scene based off a of manga scene that is very much comparable in both dramatics as well as sequencing is very impressive that the anime team was able to do this. But unfortunately, it seems as if they still keep the same result of Hawks quote unquote dying. However, within the same sequence of scenes, it's actually revealed to be an illusion by Kami in a cool transition as the feather goes from Hawks to the Kami illusion as we get the infamous Tokoyami face alongside with the arrival of the other Shiketsu High School students along with Kami, Seiji, and Inasa. And we do get a few other students from Shiketsu arriving, once again in still frames that are not as impactful but still important to the story, as they are tied to a short action sequence of seeing these characters actually fighting against All For One and how they're able to do it from a distance which prevents All For One from being able to steal the quirks because he would need to touch the original body. But unfortunately, All For One is still able to counter this with a massive attack as it's animated extremely well with the little branches coming out of his back as he fires off a large energy ball. We see that even with that attack, the students are still able to strategize with the other heroes along with Anasa who is using his wind to pick up both all of the attacks and the Toga Twice clones to attack all for one but unfortunately he's able to counter it as well but he's also able to negate and reject those attacks as well by performing another massive attack and i will point out that within the sequence of attacks from the heroes against all for one and all for one retaliating there is an added scene in the anime that is not in the manga of jiro Froppy, and uraraka on the ground blocking the lightning attacks with jiro surround sound which is a little bit inconsistent with what we've seen in the previous episode Episode of where they should be. However, this is explained later on in the episode towards the end. But even then, we get to see the moment of All For One's counterattack in Inasa's speech. We get to see something amazing. We get Tokoyami attacking All For One as we've seen a purple aura appear around All For One which is something that I brought up in episodes 10 breakdown review, how this was an indication and foreshadowing for what we will be getting in this episode, which is with the combined efforts of the weather and the flames being mitigated, all for one allowing for more clouds to roll in and all of the efforts of the heroes working together, we see that they are all representing a symbolic representation of one for all, which we see extremely well animated in this episode as it was taken from the similar scenes in the manga. We see that the connection leads to the end of the episode, quote unquote, with dark shadow, full release, dark abyss, light of Baldur, lambing into all for one in a once again still frame that really adds the impact for the attack itself and just overall looks very cool. However, the episode actually isn't done yet because something else that the anime does that I'm actually very much praising it for is that the anime was able to pull off the transition scene between chapters 381 and 382, which was showing a flashback a few minutes earlier, showing that there is more details to where Floppy, Uraraka, and Jiro came from, and how very much like in the manga, it builds up a few more details for what's going on with Toga, and how we see that Toga was able to create clones of Dobby, all for one and Toma Shikaraki. However, we do see that they are unable to use their quirks as we get a little bit more detailed of them being destroyed, which was not necessarily in the manga. And how we do get a lot of information conveyed via Suyu that is summed up as, 
as well as we do get a lot of information and deduction and that we also get a lot of information and deduction from Suyu who pretty much comes to the conclusion that Toga cannot use twice as double perfectly as we get the added animation of them falling to the ground which transitions into them running through the crowds of the Toga twice clones which would be the explanation for why they were on the ground in the previous scene and how the episode truly ends with Toga reflecting on why she can't use double like twice and be like twice. And how it's conveyed with great color transitions showing her despair and confusion as the other twice Toga clones scream in anger. Which is very much like how it was in the actual manga of all of the twice Toga clones screaming while Toga herself is being separated. And how there's a great use of the adaptation medium of the anime as we see that from the anime to the manga, there is a transition from the large crowd of Twices to the single one that is Toga to show how isolated and lonely Toga feels right now. And while we are missing some information in the background of this moment, like Uraraka and Dark Shadow slamming into All For One as it was in the manga, the scene in the anime was still done perfectly in my eyes for the medium that it's in, which really just shows that there are things that the manga can do besides doing one for one adaptations that can make the anime adaptation better in its own unique way. But yeah, that's pretty much my breakdown and review for this episode of My Hero Academia. And let me ask you this, how did you feel about the episode? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? And was there anything else that you saw that I might have missed? Leave your thoughts down below and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Do all that cool jazz and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye!